And today, I welcome you to this exclusive class from the beautiful country of King's Landing. We will start with the basics, which is the electric resistance. But before we forget, please take care of the like button. You can smash it, click on it, or simply gently touch it. As long as you turn it blue, I'm happy with it. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any question, please feel free to use the comment section. I read all your comments. Enjoy the video, my friends. You want to start from the basics? Let's do it. Voltage is equal to the resistance by the current. The voltage is simply what we call a difference of potential. Potential of what? What's the level of voltage of the ground? Zero volt. That's why many components of your house are connected to the ground via that green yellow cable, which is the earth. That's what ground the components of your house. What's my level of voltage? Well, since I'm standing on the ground, since I'm grounded, so my level of voltage is zero. That is why if by mistake, I touch an electric cable at home, for example, my feet sees zero volt because they are standing on the ground and I'm not wearing any isolating shoes. I'm wearing regular sneakers. These sneakers, they do not isolate me from the ground. Literally, my level of voltage is zero volt. But if I touch something with my hand that is 200 volt uh, AC, then in this case, my body will see a difference of voltage. That's difference of voltage will circulate a current because my body looks like a resistance. Now you heard me saying I'm not wearing isolating shoes. What did I mean by that? If I would have been wearing isolating shoes or standing on an isolating carpet, that carpet or those isolating shoes will isolate me from the ground. That means even if I touch 230 volts, my potential is all of me is 230 volts. There is no other difference, difference of potential. I am standing on a isolating carpet. Then in this case, the current will not circulate. That is why one of the safety rules of the electric engineers, when they operate, especially like in the high voltage, the first thing they need to do is to prepare their work environment. And one of the main things of their work environment is wearing the appropriate equipment, which is isolating shoes. And they, they will also put, especially in the high voltage, they will put isolating carpets on the floor. So in this case, if the guy just touch a potential, he doesn't die. Why the birds stand on electric cables and they don't die because there is no, their bodies, the bodies of these birds don't see any difference of potential. So let's assume this is a copper cable. There is a voltage between the two, you know, uh, sides of the, the, the cable. So I supply plus minus. The copper cable has what we say charges carriers. These charges carriers for the copper are the electrons. When the electron sees a difference of potential, a difference of voltage, there is a force that is applied on these electrons so when the electrons are immersed in an electric field they see a force applied to them and they move the movement of these electrons is what we call the electric currents we have zero volt here let's say we have 230 volt ac like in your house so this should be the, what we call the neutral and this is p so np neutral phase how should they write the vector of the voltage it goes like this the zero is at the center, the origin of the vector, and the arrow is at where the phase is. My voltage is here. I call it U, right? So I will keep the same letter here. If this is the voltage, right? So this is the plus. Technically, this is like the plus. The current will enter like this. This is, let's say, my source of supply. The power supply of an electric power plant is coming from a generator, let's say synchronous machine. The, the drawing of that power supply should be what we call a generator so this is the power plant which is probably you know 40 kilometers away from your house the generator is rotating and this is the phase of the generator so it's producing for you the phase here the neutral here therefore the current will go out from the phase to the zero if we want to do it in the dc word it is still the same symbol right it's still a resistance this is the minus this is the plus in this case let's say I am supplying the resistance by a DC battery. This is plus, this is minus. The voltage on the resistance is this one, right? So I'll call it U. This is the resistance. Now the question, where is the current? Where is the direction of the current, right? So I know that the current will circulate, but is it gonna go out from the plus, circulate like this, or from the minus to the plus? The answer is very simple. The battery is supplying the resistance. There is no question about it. You could see it. the battery is the source of energy. It is not the resistance. The resistance is the consumer. The battery is the source of energy. So the energy is coming out from the battery to make it easy for you and always remember it. Since the energy is coming out from the battery and this is the plus, then the current will go out like this. 
out from the battery, from the plus to the minus. If I was charging the battery, let's say if uh, you have Tesla car or, or one day you want to have Tesla car, the battery that you see here, when you will be charging it, then in this case, the current will go inside the battery. It will go like this. But this is not our case here. Here is the resistance is the consumer. You could see AC or DC is still the same conventions is just the source of energy that is different the equation is valid for both ac and dc this one since it's an ac supply the current may not be in phase with the voltage if you scope the impedance here you will see that the voltage is a sinusoid the current will be also a sinusoid but it may not be exactly at the same phase it may be delayed now for a resistance there is no delay for a resistance a pure resistance the voltage can only be exactly at the same phase as the current. Now, however, when you have other impedances like inductions and capacitors, the current is never phased with the voltage. That is why this expression, this mathematical writing, I will propose you something better. First of all, you can do like this. The voltage in time is equal to the resistance multiplied by the current in time. Why the resistance doesn't have a T in front of it. Resistance doesn't change with the time. It may change with the temperature, but that's another another discussion. The voltage and the current, they change with the time. Let's say DC. This is AC. We're talking about AC supply. The voltage and the current are sinusoid. They will go up like this. So if this is, so this is the voltage, right? So this is U, this is U max, right? So this is the time. Now, in what we call stationary regime, you can write this expression in what we call the complex world. And that is the most used uh, mathematical developments in the electric world, especially when we talk about stationary regimes. Stationary means it's like you driving your car in, in the highway. There is no external force on the, ha on the car, nothing. The car is dri driving straight. And when you turn on an oven and the oven is turned on at a certain temperature, that's a stationary regime. It's, you are not like kind of turning it on, turning it off, uh, increasing temperature, decreasing it. That's stationary regime. In this case, you can write this equation like this. What are these here? These are like the complex words. So I'm saying that the voltage is in the complex world. The current is in the complex world. This impedance is a particular case because it's a resistance, but there are other type of impedance. In fact, there are three main impedances, which is the resistance, the capacitors, and the inductions. Therefore, the R I wrote here is not really proper. If we want to make a more general equation, then we should do something like this. The voltage is equal to the impedance, which is also in complex, multiplied by the current, which is in complex world. So this is a more general equation in the complex world. Now, let me ask you a question. This voltage that I wrote here, <coughs> sorry, is the voltage on the resistance, but the battery has also its own voltage. We should write this, right? So this is VB, VB like uh, V battery, for example. My question, what's the relation between the voltage of the battery and the voltage of the resistance? Looking at this drawing like this, you might tell me, like without looking at drawing, you might say, well, it's logical, the battery is supplying the resistance, so they have exactly the same voltage because there is no other component in the circuit. Yes, that is true, because it's a very simple case. But can we have like kind of a rule that will help us understand and uh, establish the voltages for more complex circuits? The rule is the following, if I do like this, Let's call this the positive convention. Battery. So this is the voltage of the battery, right? The arrow is on the plus. The center of the vector is at the, the minus, which is the zero. Question for you, the voltage of the battery, is it in the same sense as the green one I wrote here? Or is it the opposite? You see the green is doing like this. It, it's going like this. The green arrow is going in the same sense. You see the arrow of the green is here. The arrow of the battery is here. So in this case, I should write plus. VB. The voltage of the resistance is this one, U, right? Is it in the same sense as the green arrow or the opposite? It's at the opposite because look, the two arrows are confronting each other. The green arrow here is hitting the white arrow of the voltage of the resistance. Then in this case, I should write minus U and U is the voltage of the resistance. The sum of it is equal to zero. This is a law. You do like this, you establish a referential. I took the arrow like this. I could have drawn an arrow in the opposite sense. Then you see which vector is in the same sense than the arrow, you give it a plus. If it's the opposite sense, you give it minus. Once you finish with all the voltage vectors, you say equal to zero. Then in this case, what do we have here? VB is equal to U. It may seem obvious, but once you have more voltages, more uh, components in the circuit, this rule will help you identify clearly the voltages. So, first equation in the complex world. And now that we got a bit warmed up, click on the left side of the video so we can continue with the inductance and the capacitor. See you there, my friends.